In this video, we talk about testing your robot. We all know that testing software is difficult. When you add the variability of hardware and the uncertainty of the real world, testing a robot is magnitudes more complex. If you've ever built a robot, you've had the experience of the robot working perfect up until you have to show someone else. Today, we'll discuss four strategies for testing your robot. We'll introduce an example robot so we can ground the discussion and then discuss each of the strategies. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each strategy and then give some examples of how you would use the strategy in our example robot. At the end of the video, I'll give some recommendations on when I think you should use each of these strategies. If you get any benefit from this video, then please like it, share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. So let's start with our example robot. Let's say that we have a ground vehicle that has motors that are controlled using a serial RS-232 communication channel. I have a camera that's connected via USB, a LiDAR that's connected using UDP, and a GPS receiver that's connected using an I2C bus. Then for the software, I have an obstacle detection algorithm that's using the LiDAR and the camera. I have a position estimation algorithm that's using the GPS receiver. I have a motion controller that connects to the motors and actually drives the vehicle. And then a path planner that takes in the object's detection output and the position estimation to figure out the actual path that we should be traversing in the world. And using that path through the motion controller to drive the vehicle. One of the things to note before we dive into the strategies is that the system and software architecture of your robotic system is going to greatly impact your ability to use some of these strategies. For example, if you're using a microcontroller, some of these strategies will be more difficult to utilize because of the way microcontrollers work. It'll be much easier on a single board computer or a desktop PC. In this video, we're going to focus primarily on single board computers and desktop PCs and kind of make the assumption that that is how you're building your robot. You can still apply these strategies if you're using a microcontroller. It's just will be more difficult to do because you don't have some of the flexibility that you do with a single board computer or a desktop PC. So the first strategy we're going to talk about is testing with real hardware. This is the most common and easiest one to use and it's probably the most straightforward. Uh, it's pretty fast and easy to get started because it's very easy to wrap your head around. I connect the hardware and then I start writing my code. One of the other advantages of this approach is that it shows you the real world response of your sensors and motors. We know that different hardware have different characteristics. So by just connecting to the hardware that we're going to be using, we get to see those and build our software specifically to those characteristics um, right away. However, using only real hardware for our testing can be pretty difficult, and there are a number of downsides to this approach. The first is that it's difficult to test error or failure conditions. For example, how do I test that I've lost GPS signal or that I have bad GPS signal? Um, with a real GPS receiver, I don't have any way to control that um, information uh, coming out of the GPS satellites or to control the hardware to tell it, hey, give me bad data. It can also be difficult to test dangerous scenarios. So with our car example, UGV example here, uh, how do I test that if I'm driving the car on the road, it's not going to hit a person or a person on a bicycle or run into a wall? All those things dangerous to test and it can be difficult to set up scenarios without harming a person or damaging the robot itself. Another problem is that often you don't have that many robots to actually run testing with. Uh, there's a lot of limited resources. If you're developing your robot from the ground up, often you have one fully functional robot and then a limited subset of the hardware. Maybe you have two or three LIDARs and you know, four cameras or whatever. So that prevents you from doing a lot of detailed testing because you have to share these resources with multiple developers or you're limited to one developer 
and you lose speed in development. Also, testing can be really slow when you're using real hardware. Depending on what your test is doing, it may take a long time to set up the test. I know, for example, uh, I was doing some work where we were testing intersection behavior. And to set that test up, we had to drive the vehicle into the right spot, coordinate with two other drivers, and tell them, hey, this is where your positioning is. Then we had to radio each other and tell everybody when to go. We'd start the, the robot operation. The human drivers would go. And then we would pull up to the intersection, and hopefully it all worked. But if it didn't work, then we'd have to set all that back up again. And oftentimes, it took maybe 10, 15 minutes of setup before we could even start the test. So that's a long time of setup just to run one test. And similarly, a problem with that kind of testing approach is that it's difficult to create the exact same test scenario repeatedly. The time of the day that you're running the test in can impact it if you're using cameras with the position of the sun. The position of the satellites can impact your GPS quality. The um, error that humans have where am I exactly 10 meters back or am I 12 meters back? Am I too close? So you can't get a repeatable test situation every single time because there's all this variability in just having people do this testing um, in this manner. So how do we actually use this testing strategy? Again, it's probably the most straightforward testing strategy because you simply plug in the hardware or plug in your device, start writing your code, and then look at the output from your algorithm to see if it's doing what you think it should do. How you verify that it's doing what it's supposed to, that can vary between using some data analysis techniques or maybe you just plug it on your robot, start driving the robot around and see what the robot does. This is often the very first approach where stick the GPS on my vehicle, drive the vehicle around outside. Is it driving the path that I want? Is it close enough to the path that I want? The second approach is testing with simulated hardware. So this is a very popular approach today because there are lots of tools available now. Gazebo, Webots are full-fledged robot simulators. And then you have a lot of game engines that are being used to create robot simulations, such as Unity and Unreal Engine. One of the pros of this approach is that your simulation acts like the real world while providing unlimited resource availability and repeatability. Creating a simulated environment is a lot cheaper than building a full-fledged robot or purchasing more hardware. It's relatively cheap to spawn this new simulation or purchase a computer that can have its own simulation engine running than purchasing additional LiDAR or cameras or building a fully functional robot. Repeatability we get from being able to put the simulation in very specific states. Um, we can say, hey, this car needs to be 10 meters from this other car, and the simulation will do that every single time uh, without fail. So much easier to get repeatable tests in simulation than it is with real hardware. It's also a little bit easier to create error and failure conditions than real hardware, and easier to create complex scenarios. If we think about our example of testing a self-driving car, well, it's much easier to test crash conditions or dangerous situations using simulation than it is with real hardware. However, simulation still has some downsides. The first is that even though it's like the real world, it's not exactly the same as the real world. Simulated sensors tend to provide perfect data while real sensors have error and noise, which we have to account for. So if you develop your algorithm using simulated data, then it may not function when you go to real hardware. In addition, simulations may not perform at the same rate as the real world. Because the simulation has to recreate what should happen in the real world, then it takes up a lot more processing power than a sensor that's just hitting 
or sensing what already exists. So we may get a reduction in performance when we use simulation over using real world hardware. Another challenge with using simulation is that it can be difficult to set up. If I want to use a simulated world, then I have to create that world before I can start doing any testing. And that may take a long time and may be difficult to do. And it must Im imitate what I want to do in the real world. So if I have a complex real world scenario, then creating that in simulation may be very difficult to do. In addition, I have to keep everything synchronized. As I make changes to my real robot or my real system, then I have to simulate those changes or synchronize those changes with the ch uh, changes in the simulation. If I move a sensor, then I have to move the sensor in simulation. Finally, it may be difficult to inject the simulated hardware into my system. Depending on how I'm getting the sensor data from the real hardware, I may need to recreate native communication mechanisms. So for example, if I wanted to use a simulated camera in our example robot, then I somehow have to inject that simulated camera data potentially on the USB bus, which could be really difficult to do. This is where system design has a major impact on what you can and cannot test and how difficult it may be to introduce some test strategies. Finally, some error and failure conditions, while easier to create in simulation, may still be very hard to create. This really depends on how your simulation is set up and if you've considered these test scenarios when you were constructing your simulation. But for example, it may be difficult to simulate that the hardware goes offline unexpectedly or that your GPS or position estimation suddenly starts providing bad data. Here's an example of how we would use simulation if we were trying to test our path planner. So we may replace our position estimation algorithm with some simulated position. We want to have the motion um, controller impact the position in the world most likely. So maybe we need to replace the motion controller part such that when the path planner produces some output, we are actually impacted the sim impacting the simulated position estimation. The third strategy is to test with recorded data. So this is going to be very similar to simulation, but we're going to be using real data instead of simulated data. But unlike real hardware, we're not going to be getting that real data real time or live. We're going to record the data and then play it back as if it was live. If you're using a framework like ROS, this is similar to using the ROS bag um, functionality where you record the data and the topics coming out of your ROS nodes and then you play it back. So a couple of benefits of this approach is that it's very easy to use. Again, depending on your system design, you may be able to easily use recorded data with no changes to your software. And it has high levels of repeatability because I'm using the exact same data that I've recorded before and I'm simply playing it back. It's the exact same data every single time. However, there are some downsides to this approach. First, it may be difficult to collect the recorded data. Again, depending on how your system is set up, you have to figure out where is the right point in which to capture the data that you want to play back. And then where do you inject that playback data? Looking back similar to with simulation, you need to, you may need to recreate the native communication mechanism. It can be very difficult or impossible to test dynamic scenarios because we're simply playing back data that was collected. Then any changes or responses that the robotic system is going to make based on that um, input is not going to be fed back into the data you're providing. So if you're trying to play back GPS data, it's always going to play back the same positions, regardless of how the vehicle actually responds to that input or produces different path plans um, based on some new or different information. So from the vehicle's perspective, it's traversing the same path every single time. So how do we use this approach? Let's say we were trying to test the obstacle detection algorithm. We could record the LIDAR and camera data 
and simply replay it as if it was sent from the real sensor into our obstacle detection algorithm, which could then uh, process that data and we can test that the algorithm is doing the correct thing every time. Some LiDAR manufacturers provide tools to do this out of the box so that from the perspective of their driver, they're just playing back uh, recorded data, but it looks the same and they have tools for doing the actual recording. And because of the way our obstacle detection algorithm is structured, we need to synchronize the LiDAR and the camera data somehow. So the fourth approach I want to talk about today is testing with fake data. So this is similar to simulation and recorded data, but we're going to manually generate some data to feed into our system. The pros of this is that it's repeatable, similar to recorded data, and we can easily generate failure and error scenarios. Because I'm generating the data by hand, I can create the very specific test data I need for these failure and error scenarios. It's also easy to generate complex scenarios. So if I need five vehicles or 10 vehicles or whatever coming out of my obstacle detection algorithm, I may be able to easily create those, again, depending on how our system is designed. There still are some downsides to this approach, though. The first is that you can't really test dynamic scenarios. If I'm manually generating this data, then if there's some kind of feedback loop that should unpack that data, um, it's difficult to create that manually. At that point, we're kind of getting back into a simulation type approach versus just fake data. Similar to simulation and recorded data, it can be difficult to inject this fake data into your system, depending on your communication mechanism. And then you need to generate this fake data. So how do you do that? Um, depending on what the data is, it can be fairly difficult to generate. For example, LiDAR produces thousands of points per second. Generating these, this fake data can be difficult. And often simulation or recorded data is a little bit easier. So how do we incorporate this testing strategy? Let's say I want to test my path planner. And I want to verify that it will function as expected with five, 10 vehicles on the road. Well, that would be very difficult to set up using real hardware because I'd need to have a stretch of road and then place 10 cars in the correct configuration. That could be easier to do with simulation, but I still have to build a simulation to create that environment. Recorded data doesn't apply because if I can't create that environment in the real world, then I can't record the data to begin with. But maybe I know what the output of the obstacle detection algorithm needs to look like, what the shape of the objects are, what the vehicles look like, etc. And I can manually create those. So I can manually create uh, 10 fake obstacles and then inject that into my path planner algorithm and see what it does. So if there's a simpler representation of the obstacle that can be fed into the path planning algorithm, then I can easily fake those and I can fake an infinite number of them. If you wanted to test the behavior, if the GPS position was stuck or feeding bad data, I could generate some bad GPS data or generate some repeating GPS data and feed that into my path planning algorithm. And I don't actually need simulation and I don't actually need real GPS data. I could just take a single line and or a single point out of it and feed that into my algorithm. So you may have noticed there are two common challenges with any test double strategy. Test double meaning simulated hardware, recorded data, or fake data. The first is that you have to figure out how do you actually inject this test data into your system. Secondly, it may be difficult to test the entire system because it's often all or nothing. If I'm trying to test the entire vehicle, then all of the data needs to be synchronized so that the vehicle has a coherent experience in terms of the data that's being fed into it. If I'm using real motors, but a simulated position, the position won't update based on the motor commands, leaving the vehicle confused as to why it's driving, but the position isn't changing. I remember working on a project 
and at some point the GPS got stuck and the vehicle thought, well, I'm not moving because I'm in a rut or a ditch. So the correct solution is to apply more gas. Well, the vehicle actually was moving. So it was accelerating to try to get out of whatever stuck position it was in and actually was pretty dangerous as it was accelerating towards a wall and you had to hit the emergency stop. So how do we alleviate these two challenges with using these strategies? Well, as I mentioned a few times, your system design is very important. Your system must allow for modular testing. So you must design your system so that you can replace different elements um, in it and then perform the testing that you need. If you do this, then you open up these three additional testing strategies of simulated hardware, recorded data, and fake data. If you don't do that, then you're pretty much stuck using only the one strategy of real hardware testing. So I really advocate for a test first design philosophy. As you're doing your system design, you should be thinking about how do I plan on testing this so that I design my system with that in mind. So here are my recommendations for when to use these different testing strategies, assuming that your system will allow you to select any one of them. Test with real hardware when you're doing initial hardware interface development. This will demonstrate that you can communicate with the real hardware and give you a deeper understanding of the communication mechanisms and what data is being sent back and forth. It will also bring awareness around any quirks that that specific piece of hardware may have. And you'll get an understanding of the hardware's characteristics. And always must def most definitely test with real hardware when you're doing release validation. You must test against real hardware before you release your code or release your robot out into the real world. Test with simulated hardware when you're developing your motion control algorithms. Simulation is the best second choice for having that feedback loop to verify that your control algorithms are working correctly. Also use simulated hardware when you're trying to verify dangerous scenarios, situations that will put people, other animals, or the robot itself in danger. Simulation is also a great choice for doing long-term robustness testing of the software, where you want to verify that your software can be run repeatedly, consistently, day after day. Finally, use simulated hardware for your pre-release validation. So this is the validation before you take your final um, testing out to the real world. Test with recorded data when you're developing your data analysis algorithms, such as image processing or object detection. If you're receiving data from a sensor and you need to do some analysis on it, to create some simplified output, like I see three people in this scene, or there are six cars detected, this is the perfect time to use recorded data because you can capture that data and then replay it consistently into your algorithm and verify that what it's finding is correct and is the same every single time. You can also use recorded data to test your motion control algorithms once they've been developed. It's not that great if you're in the middle of your development process and you're trying to tune your motion control algorithms because you're making changes and you want to see what the response of that tuning is going to have um, on the control algorithm. But once that's been established, you can use recorded data and verify that the next step in the motion control algorithm is as you expect it to be. Finally, test with fake data when you are testing your decision-making algorithms. These are things like your state machine transitions. What state should I be in right now? Your behavior, behavior selection. What behavior should I be executing right now? Your path planning based on this input and these objects, what is the ideal path? Any kind of high level overview type algorithm. You can also use fake data to test your data analysis algorithms, such as image processing and object detection, if it's easy to create that fake data. LiDAR is a sensor that would be fairly difficult to fake just because of the amount of data 
but something like a camera scene may be a little bit easier or GPS receiver data could be easier. Finally, use fake data for testing error, failure, or other hard to generate conditions. Because I'm manually generating this data, I can massage it into a form that makes the most sense to represent the situation that I want to recreate, such as bad GPS data, or camera is not working correctly, or whatever it may be. In this video, we discussed four strategies for testing a robot. Testing with real hardware, testing with simulated hardware, testing with recorded data, and testing with fake data. One of the things that we talked about numerous times is that your system design is critical in order to enable most of these testing strategies. You must be able to design your system such that everything is modular and can be easily replaced so that you can inject the simulated, recorded, or fake data into the system with minimal changes to the rest of the system. So therefore, you should be thinking about testing early and often in the system design process. That's it for now. Talk to you soon. Bye.